Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video with the uh, with the VFR. What we're going to be doing in this video is we are going to be fitting a braided stainless steel clutch line from Hell Performance uh, to the bike. Um, uh, if you've seen the uh, the previous video where I did the, uh, the brake lines, I've replaced all the brake lines and I also bought this at the same time. So this is the next stage, um, you know, in, in that uh, in that work. So if we uh, open up the packet and have a look at what we've got inside, we obviously have the line itself. Um, it's not a massively long line because obviously it only has to go from here down to the slave cylinder. Um, so that's the line. And then in addition to all you know the documentation and a little warranty card that they give you in the package, we have a couple of banjos, a couple of single banjos and some uh, copper washers uh, in order to fit it. So yeah before we can uh, before we can go about uh, actually stripping the old one off what we need to do is uh, drain the fluid from the clutch um from the you know from the reservoir and the line um so i'll get on with that i'll strip it all out get rid of it uh, and then we can uh, then we can set about actually pulling the old line off the bike <laughs> Okay, so the uh, the system is now fully drained. Um, there's no fluid left in it whatsoever. So what we can do now is we can start to disconnect the banjos that hold the uh, the old line uh, onto the clutch cylinder. We'll start at this end first. We'll do the master cylinder end uh, last. Um, so the banjo is just here and it's a 12 mil spanner. Now um, I can get an open ended spanner on there quite easily, but these are quite tight and I can't get the ring on there because the speed sensor is in the way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to Remove these two 8mm bolts holding on the speed sensor. That's one. And two. And there we are. As you can see, speed sensor just pops out um, of its location and we've got good access to uh, to the banjo the speed sensor basically is that's that's this is all it is basically the end of this sits on the um the end of the bolt on the front sprocket and spins with the front sprocket that's that's all there is to it so we can take that out of the way we don't need that so with our 12 mil spanner we can now get the ring end on and give it a good cracking off they will be tight and there we go now there may be a little bit of fluid weep out of here depending upon how much you managed to get out when you were uh, when you pour the fluid through, might be a little bit drip out. If there is, then just grab some tissue, and just mop up any spills. And there we go. There is, there is the clutch line removed from the clutch slave cylinder, and here is the old banjo with both the old um, both the old washers. Now these washers aren't reusable, so they're there for the bin. Um, and we don't need the banjo either because obviously we've got new stainless steel ones uh, in the kit. So now we can, uh, this is free to move and we can, if I give it a good flap, you can hear it flapping around inside. So I don't believe there's any, uh, anything that's like holding it in position. Uh, I'm pretty, pretty sure once we've pulled it um, off this end, we'll be able to pull the whole thing out um, and then we can feed the new one in. But I've got a little plan for how I'm gonna try and do that and we'll see if it works. Okay, next, master cylinder end. Okay, if we push the bars to the right down here, we've got this this little bracket here and the clutch line is this one here with the rubber sheath around it that I'm just pressing on now. That is the clutch line and it goes through this bracket. So this um, eight mil bolt here holds this little block on for the, for the braking system. And if we crack it off, we can remove this bolt which will remove the bracket and then it'll just be a case of putting it all back together once the new clutch line's in no arm done pull the bolt all the way out
Nem van. Yeah, it took a while to come out. Right. And there's a little bracket. So we'll pop that down there. And here we go. Here's the here's the clutch line um, that we're going to uh, be replacing. And it comes up up here, around here. And there's two tie wraps just here that we will need to snip and replace afterwards. One and two and there we are that is the clutch line free so now yeah if i if i give this a little tug we can see it pulling here and it feels like yeah there's nothing holding it in, in you know there's nothing holding it uh, anywhere along here it's it's free to move so now we can actually get the bolt on the master cylinder and crack that off Right then, 12 mil, and crack that off. Again, if you were uh, expecting any fluid to come out, then get some uh, get some workshop rag or something or some tissue around it just to catch anything. And again, there's the other banjo with the two washers, and again, that's uh, that's no longer required. So now we are ready to you know pull the uh, pull the old hose out but what i've got is a little bit of a plan and i'm going to give it a go and see if it works so let me go and grab the new line and we'll uh, we'll set about getting it installed okay so here is the uh, here is the brand new line and as you can see each end of the line is different now we have to get it installed in the correct manner and these should match the uh, the old cable so if we look at the top end by the master cylinder we can see that that end kicks over to the left just like so and if we come down to the come down to the slave cylinder end we can see that this end is straight but it is bent in this in this direction um, as is this one so we know it needs to go that way around so we've determined that what we what I want to do is I'm going to try pull the old hose out feeding this one in behind it as we pull and I'm going to try and do that with the use of a, uh, a zip tie or a cable tie or whatever you want to call them um, and basically what I'm going to do is zip tie it end on end just like so making sure obviously that the that I've got the right end so I've got the slave cylinder end attached at the this is the slave cylinder end and all I'm going to do is tighten the zip tie so that it's end on end, like so. Cut off the excess so it doesn't get in, in the way. And then tuck in the little block piece inside. So hopefully you can see what my plan is. Effectively what I want to do now is if I give this a tug, it should pull the old cape, the old hose all the way through, hopefully. I mean, up here, they, it does go behind a few cables and what have you, so it may be a little bit, you know, it may need a little bit of fettling to get it through. But if I pull this, this old hose through, it should pull the brand new one through behind it. And I think that's probably the easiest way to get the new hose where I want it to be. And there we are. The plan worked brilliantly. That, <laughs> that actually worked perfectly, exactly as I wanted it to. So now, if I snip that off, there we go. So there's the old hose, no longer required. So that's fit for the bin. And we've got the new one rooted exactly where it needed to be. So what we need to do is obviously just get the orientation correct because um, that one sits like that and then make sure that the orientation for this is in the right position. Now one thing I will say and um, somebody asked me this on um, I think it was on my Kev Shed group on Facebook um, saying that the uh, the orientation of their banjos wasn't right and that if they installed it in that manner that the cable, the, not the cable sorry, the hose would be twisted. Well these actually are able to be turned. I've literally just turned that one they're a bit stiff 
but I don't know if you can see that on the camera or not, but I am actually turning that ever so slightly, independently of the hose. Now they're very stiff, but if you get a, a, you know something like a set of grips or something on there, you can actually rotate them. They're made to rotate without leaking. That's what they're actually designed to do. Um, there is a Hell uh, Performance video where it shows that happening. Uh, what I'll do, I'll, 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 I'll overlay that now so you can see what I mean. Um, but yeah, they, they actually do rotate. Um, so if you need to, you can turn them with a set of grips or something like that. performance swage all of their brake hoses to ensure the integrity of the product. Their design of brake hose fitting offers three sealing points on the hose, but still allows the fitting to be rotated for alignment after it's been swaged. The swage machine crimps using high pressure hydraulics to leave an attractive, permanently attached fitting to each line. Okay, so now we've got this um, through where it needs to be, we can uh, we can set about getting the hardware fitted to install it onto the slave and master cylinders. Okay, so here's a little bag of uh, little bag of hardware. If I tip it all out, we should have two banjos and four copper washers, which we have. So let's stick a copper washer on the banjo for the front. And then we've got the two remaining for the for the clutch uh, for the clutch slave cylinder. So if I pop one on, put that through the banjo, stick the other washer on the other side, and then I can hand tighten. Okay, I'm just going to get it up to touch for now. I'm not going to tighten anything to spec as yet okay so there we go i'll leave that like that because we do need to get on there and uh, talk that up um but that's the that's the uh, the slave cylinder end what we'll do now we'll get onto the master cylinder end uh pick up the bolt now what we'll need to do is come up in the same position um, that the old one did and check the orientation. Now the orientation for this as you can see is actually really really good um, I don't need to uh, make any adjustments to how it's how it's um, sitting So we get the bolt on And Get her installed Again just up to touch and there we go. Right, now, what we need to do is just make sure that we root everything correctly where it was. And we can install our little bracket here again. to get in place yep there we go we're installed this bolt is super long for this for this application it on there nice and straight and then I'll nip it up like I said it's the longest bolt in the world right there we go and just nip it up it doesn't have to be super tight and there we go okay so if I move the handlebars over here now what we can do is I can get a couple of tie wraps one tie wrap went round all of these cables and the hose and then another one uh, below it tie wrapped everything to the fork leg so I'll do that very very shortly um, but first what I want to do is obviously I'll need to get the torque wrench out and just torque both of these bolts up now the uh, 
The documentation that comes with the Hell Performance Kit says that they're to be talked a minimum of 14 pounds feet, a maximum of 24 pounds feet. That's pounds feet, not newton meters. So uh, yeah, I'll go get the torque wrench, get them tightened up, and then um, I will uh, get some tie wraps. Tie wrap all of this good stuff up. Okay, so as you can see here, the, uh, the cables and everything is all tie wrapped up and both banjos I have talked. What I did was I went in the middle, I went to 20, uh, 20 pounds feet, um, and you know, what I'll do when we when I bleed it. Obviously I just need to check to make sure that they're not leaking. If they do leak, then I've got another four pounds feet with, to play with um, up to the maximum torque spec. Okay, so next what I need to do is get the speed sensor reinstalled. Two little screws holding that in place. Um, just need to make sure that it does pop onto the bolt, otherwise you'll have trouble getting it on. As long as it goes over the bolt on the sprocket, it'll, it'll fit fine. And then just nip them up to touch. They don't need to be leaned on at all. So there we are. That is the clutch line installed. Now, uh, all I need to do now is uh, fill it fluid bleed it out and uh, drop it is a good and now I'm not going to do that in this video because uh, you know I've, I've done videos on clutch bleeding before and if you want to see that then I'll leave the link in the top corner now uh, for those of you that don't see video cards on the video uh, depending upon the device you're on I will also leave the link in the description so you can uh, so you can head over to there and I'll also leave a uh, link to uh, the help performance website and uh, the bleeding tools that I use uh, because I've got a little vacuum pump which is absolutely perfect for this kind of job Anyway, guys, that is the end of this video. Hopefully, hopefully, should I say, you'll, uh, you enjoyed it, uh, maybe found it useful. If you did, then uh, leave a comment below. Um, head over to the socials, uh, both uh, Facebook um, and Twitter. Uh, I've also got Instagram as well, so you can check that out. Um, hopefully see you over there. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for stopping by, and I'll see you all again for the very next video. Take care. Bye-bye now.